Um, well, should we start? Maybe, maybe I can just start. Uh, um, uh, I was very privileged uh, exactly 10 years ago when, when I received a visit from uh, Martina Onici, uh, who came to me and, and in my office uh, at, at the university and, and told me this fascinating story about her husband and his work. And I was, I was spellbound by this idea of, of him uh, traveling to Afghanistan and finding lapis lazuli and then turning this into his life work. And uh, I was, uh, I pledged to Martina at, at that moment that, that yes, we will try to do something to, to spread knowledge of, of his work and, and his life. And uh, I'm very sorry that it has taken this long, but I'm <laughs> very happy to see that, that, that thanks to the help of, of Yulia, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> it has come into fruition and that, that now there's a, there's a chance for people to see his work and, and to hear about his, his uh, fascinating life, lifeline, life story, and of course his tragic end. And I'm very, very happy that we can do, we can do so today. Uh, and I'll be speaking more, I suppose, from, from the side of art history, and, and, and Martina will be speaking more uh, from the life of, of the artist, and Sabina will also be, be uh, uh, joining in. So this is basically the, the, the structure of today's talk. Um, how should we start? Well, first of all, maybe the, uh, uh, the material. Uh, and I think it's very important to, to think about the material in the center of, of, his, his, of his work, especially his latter work. Um, and um, uh, Lapis Lazuli has, has a long, distinguished, and also a quite fascinating uh, story in life, not, not only of, of art history, but also of uh, material culture. Uh, it has been used now for, for over 6,000 years, if you can imagine. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was favored by the pharaohs of, of ancient Egypt. Uh, it was used in the Middle Ages um, on, the, on the blue cloth of the Madonna. Uh, it was uh, carried across the Mesopotamia to Syria, to Iran. It has a, a fascinating uh, history. And the, the incredible thing is that it came, comes out of uh, a small area in the mountains uh, in northeastern uh, Afghanistan, uh, Badakhshan, in, in an area that is now controlled by the Taliban, uh, but most, most remote and, and uh, not only not known to the wider public until quite late. Uh, and and from, this, from this small place, from these mines, it spread across uh, the world as, as we knew it. Uh, to China, it also came via the Silk Road to, to uh, places like Dunhuang, uh, Kitsi, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, these places we see traces up to the 7th century, but then it was discon discontinued in the East, uh, and while it, it gained much uh, uh, importance and enthusiasm in uh, the West, it was more expensive than gold, it was highly sought after, and uh, and of course because of its remote area, it was given the name uh, uh, ultramarine, something that comes across the seas. Um, so uh, as but as as Mr. Onishi said in one of his articles, uh, this uh, when he when when he brought it into Japan, uh, this is the first time the Japanese see it. And anyway, anyway, he was he was right because it wasn't used in in uh, Japan. And Japan used other materials, such as uh, blue glass that was imported from, from China and crushed into a powder. Uh, and this then uh, becomes this revolution in, in the field of Japanese painting when Mr. Onishi brings it to, to Japan and creates this, this mechanism, uh, this technique, uh, totally his own, uh, of, of using it within paintings and then in, in ceramics. Uh, and, and this is really quite a remarkable achievement and something that really hasn't been uh, celebrated as, as it should. But uh, with that, I, I think I'll <laughs> leave the uh, microphone to others <laughs> so I don't dominate the whole half hour. <laughs> um, could you, Martina, could you tell us a little bit about your husband's first meetings with, uh, with Lapis Lazuli and how yeah. you knew about it? Yes, it was in 2003. Um, the university he worked they had uh, um, 
they got the order to send a group of um, sensei and, and some a group of um, younger sensei to Afghanistan because it was so hard for the climate and so. And they have to go to Afghanistan because um, they have to show after a building which can be used as a museum. Because mm. before the war, some um, art, or the art, art mm. yeah, were brought to Japan as a protection. And in 2003, also for many countries, they, they thought the war in Afghanistan is over and they sent a lot of help that the people in Afghanistan could get their own country back mm -hmm. again. And this was, um, the order came to Gedai, just look after the museum and make some connections with the Afghanistan people. So there were, I, I don't know how many, but it was a kind of group of 10 and people from the university they went to Kabul and then they stayed in Kabul and they visited many places. And there was a, a small shop for souvenirs mm -hmm. when he saw the rose stone of Lapis Lazuli. And it was exactly the time when I did gave birth to my third child. So my husband was absent and I was upset, of course. <laughs> and as a, a kind of, because I got some help from other mothers, and it was a kind of present for them. He bought some, some chains for the woman from Lapis Lazuli. And he came back to Japan and he said, yes, I brought something from Afghanistan through this woman who helped you and also some necklace for me. And he said, look, a handful of stones, he also bought. And he said, look at these beautiful blue stones. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what to do with them. So he asked me then, do we have some sandpaper? I said, yes, of course we have. And then he took the sandpaper on our living room table and he started like this. Oh, look, there comes some powder. Oh, that's great. Oh, and, and he couldn't stop. He went to the bathroom <laughs> and took a opuro <laughs> and he couldn't stop. He did this for I don't know how many hours. And the, the next day he said, now I have so many from this. Look here. Um, can, may, do you think I can use this for painting? And I said, I don't know. This is your job to find it out. <laughs> and after a while he came back and he said, yes, I have to I need more lapis lazuli stones because I have found um, the, how to, the technique how to make a pigment from this. And then he went to um, Tokyo Mineral Fair in Sunshine Building, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. once, once a yes. year, I think. Yes, yes, yes. And he went there and then he came back home and he said, I have found an Afghanistan dealer. He's Afghan, he's living in Tokyo, and he's from a family who has their own mine in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And this family has seven um, sons, and all of these sons are around the world. Mm -hmm. One is in Munich, and one is in Tokyo, or in, in Japan, and this, no, he connected. And from this man, he got in the years all the stones he needed. Mm -hmm. Yes, directly from him. And after a while, he knew which is the best stone and which is not so good stone. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they had some prize. And he said to, his, to this man after a while, OK, please bring me the stones only this color mm -hmm. and this quality and in this size. And the man, he was, I think he was his best customer. <laughs> he said, yes, of course. And there was another. I, I, I met them, these two men together. So it was also interesting in, my husband cannot, couldn't speak English well, and the, the Afghanistan dealer couldn't speak Japanese well, but both could communicate very well. Mm -hmm. And my husband wasn't a, an, an ordinary Japanese man, so he could deal with, in the Afghanistan or the, the Muslim or mm -hmm. Afghanistan, mm -hmm. Arabian way, yeah? This is the price. Oh no, this is not the price. Or something like this. <laughs> so by the year he got much more better quality um, by a cheaper price. <laughs> <laughs> and and after a while it was really it was maybe after five years or so, I once went in his atelier in Geda, he had a big atelier. And 
in, in the atelier, everything, every place was stones. He also had boxes with the stones. Wow. He had um, all was the, the tables are filled with the glasses, <laughs> yeah, and they had uh, lapis lazuli everywhere, everywhere. And and I said, and the, the sun comes came in, and I said, it, it's amazing your room because even the, the atmosphere all is blue, <laughs> yeah. He, even yeah, the yeah. dust was blue in his atelier. It was just a. Amazing. Incredible, amazing. Mm. amazing room, yeah. And and when and then he started to paint his first picture, and I saw it in in some exhibition, and said, "Yes, this is his color." Now, I, I felt at the beginning when I met him, I felt this artist has something special. Mm. He had a mm. such a strong um, wish to do something, mm. and he has his own way, and just. Let him go his way, and when he started with Lovis Lazuli, I knew, okay, now he got it. Mm -hmm. This was my feeling at the time. Yes, he got it. Yeah, his yeah, color, yeah, he got yeah, his yeah, color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this is the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, no, it's, it's an incredible description of how you could spend so much time and energy and just your joy and, and trying to find out what to do with the material and apparently so for me this exhibition is also the first time I got into touch with this works and it was a beautiful bright day outside and I came in and first I saw um, the landscapes and then Julia showed me around and I I just remember, so I'm, I'm trained also in Western art history and also in, in Japanese, well, East Asian art history. And when I saw these paintings by a Japanese artist of, of the sky and how he perceived the blue atmosphere, I experienced myself when I was uh, hiking in Japan and this color um, behind it. And, and Julia told me about all these stories. It was just mind blowing. For me, I really enjoyed that quite a lot. So um, it made me also think of um, so having heard that he he that there's a Japanese artist coming to train in, in a small town in Germany and um, getting having having a similar experience in my own life of going out and, and being trained somewhere else, and you start to reflect what what is your heritage kind of what's your identity and how does it change and, and it kind of changes like 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 the light changes outside once you're exposed to something and i think the experience of getting going out and meeting this pigment or this color and and then mm -hmm. reflecting on it in your own experience and how this is kind of reflected in his works this is really touching for me, it was a great experience. So thank you so much <laughs> for everyone for making this possible. And, and I hope you enjoy these, these works in, in the same manner. It's also so incredible to see how it's the same pigment can have different um, intensities when it's on, on ceramics or if it's on, on paintings. And it made me think of, um, I'm not sure if, if actually Goethe said it himself, but it's kind of um, I connected with his ideas um, of his color theory that when you look at, a, at the sky and you feel this calmness and then you try to take the same color and project it onto a different object, for example, a chair, you looking at a blue chair, you wouldn't feel as calm as when looking into the sky. But standing in front of these paintings, it was for me like, no, this is like exactly like looking at the sky. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, still, um, it's, it's so incredible. So, um, I hope this emotional or sensational approach, um, on the one hand, reflected by his experience with his nature um, loving, apparently, um, life, and how, how he projected that into the paintings is really an inspiration for me. It was, was definitely a, a, a clear spiritual element <laughs> to, to the yes. colors and to the paintings. I think. It's not just a pigment, it's not just a color, it's something much deeper that he's trying to, 
to, to get at, and, and I think that comes across very clearly in, in, his, in his works. Mm -hmm. um, actually, here. I, I think he, he wrote something <laughs> about that, if, if I may just uh, um, have a, um, read a, a short statement uh, written by Mr. Uh, thank, thanks to, to, mm -hmm. your, to your help. Um, and he says, I'm sure that this color, that the, the lapis lazuli, is in me some, somewhere, but maybe not, but not maybe somewhere else. The uncertainty uh, that between reality and memory as it always exists, seems to be a common in the feeling in the people who can look in the sky or in front of a fire for hours on end. I feel that color transcends phenomena and is connected to memory. What is the color that we perceive and continue to experience in our memory? I feel that the existence of colors, either outside of the physical and logical concept of color, has become the environment of our world. So there is there's this element of memory, this element of us, of the spiritual. Um, it's it's this something that transcends what we see around us, that we see in this in this uh, blue, the color blue, mm -hmm. and uh, carry through this uh, mineral lapis lazuli. Uh, he also if, uh, he also has a, a really lovely s statement about the history of it. Um, throughout human history, lapis lazuli has always been the color of the highest order and available only to those in power at any given time, regardless of race, religion, or age. All the religions born on the Eurasian continent regard the blue of lapis lazuli as a color that creates the heavenly world. Such a color has disappeared since the 18th century in the West and since the mural paintings of the Kitsil or Dunhuang in Asia. I feel there is a secret to the beauty that humanity has been seeking beyond time and religion, and I would like to know what is the reason why lapis lazuli has been treated with such importance across cultures and religions? So, uh, Alice says that's much better than I can say it. Um, he, he's, he's clearly, clearly, clearly engaged with, with lapis lazuli on a, on a very deep philosophical basis, and uh, and this 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 knowledge, this searching for truth, uh, is also something that I feel comes very clearly through in his works. But also, I mean, uh, Sabine, you mentioned this idea of, of uh, somebody come, traveling to, to Germany and, and experiencing um, the culture there, uh, coming back to Japan, going to Afghanistan, mm. and, and then also dealing with this global, the global <coughs> phenomenon of, of the Latin Islam and its history. And there's this intensely in, intercultural, uh, uh, global, international, if you say, um, element to, to his work and also as to the artist. Mm. He's really somebody who transcends borders um, and, uh, and gains appreciation for other, other cultures, other traditions. That, uh, at least that's, that's what I interpret. Martina, you maybe have your take on that. Yes. No, I mean, he was always searching for something, mm -hmm. searching for his own. What is what is me? What I am as a mm -hmm. human being? What is my 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 talk to my my uh, subject to do in this mm -hmm. world or something? And on the other side, he is also someone who, yeah, um, he went for fishing. He went for fishing not to catch the fish, but to catch himself. So mm -hmm. the, the, when he got the fish, the fish. A victimized or sacrificed his life mm -hmm. for him. So mm -hmm. when he, he said, "I got only a fish when I'm, I gave up myself." So going for fishing was a kind of um, giving up myself and finding myself. And when he got, he got really big fishes, he was a just he's all he said, "I'm the legend of the Ginza Co." <laughs> yeah, and he did a lot of efforts. And when I asked him, "What is your job in life?" Mm -hmm. And he said, I exactly, I don't want to paint. This is something I have to do because the society expects it. But my, my, real, my real feeling in life is I'm, I'm going for fishing. But not fishing um, to get a fish. This was not, not to deal with fish, not to sell them, not only to eat them. When he got a fish and we went back home, and we, we prepared the fish for eating, and all the family <laughs> sitting around the table, we start to eat. Oh, she doesn't 
He said, I'm sorry, I cannot eat. He mm. couldn't eat his own ah. fish. So because this was a kind of, he's eating himself. Kind of, <laughs> or he's eating his inner side of himself. So yeah, this is also uh, some fascinating thing of his personality <laughs> that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Would it be fair to say that he had an unusual personality? No, he was quite in a normal normal thing. He was quite normal, mm -hmm. and he was a little bit, as I think, n not normal Japanese. He was not. He wasn't so formal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, he said also among the um, other professors and sensei in Geda, he said, "I'm the, the Neanderthaler <laughs> 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 because um, I'm more the country man or something." He yes, said, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm in my mind. I'm not. I haven't read so many books like them. They, they are more strict. They are more, um, yeah. They are more. How can I say? Intellectual. Mm -hmm. He said, I, "I'm not so intellectual, but I have something. Otherwise, I couldn't do this." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. And um, also, he he smoked a lot. He eat a lot of. Um, yeah. How can I say? A lot of things right. yeah he didn't care so much about his body and he wasn't so um yeah he was just in one way he was easy in the other way when he went for fishing or for his work he was absolutely strict person uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. and he worked from nine o'clock in the morning until late night mm -hmm. for the next morning so this is also his kind of personality mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the, in the search for something, and, uh, yes. through, through these yes. long, long hours. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. So he could sometimes be quite lazy, and there was sometimes then a period where I knew, okay, now he is in his way of doing something, and I cannot stop him or okay. I cannot. Right. Yeah. yeah. What What was his feeling toward Germany? I mean, he he studied there longer time in Nuremberg. Right? Yes. Was he Was he did he always have a longing to go back to Germany? Was was it amb ambivalent? Or? Mm. No, it is also interesting why chose he chose Nuremberg. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, he came from from <laughs> Gedai, so and he was thirty years old around. He was thirty nine, and he was thinking, okay, now I I'm on the point where the people in Japan expect from me how I have to paint. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. in in in. Um, all paintings mm -hmm. and they have some image um, what will be the next picture for me right. yeah nude bodies and the fish and the waves or something <laughs> and he said but I, I felt more and more um, like in a prison I don't want to expect or I want I don't want to um, how can I say um, to fulfill the expectation what the people mm -hmm. have on me so I have to go out of this. Uh -huh. I, I have to go out, but I don't want to go to Hamburg or Berlin or Düsseldorf at this time, which has a good name, because Geda is for me the best name. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes yeah? And I want to have a, a quiet time in my life, mm -hmm. because he was so busy in, in his younger age. So, and he was thinking, okay, Munich, mm, Munich is also too big. What? There is a an academy in Nuremberg? Never heard before. Yeah? <laughs> oh, there is a class not only in Nuremberg, but there is a class in an old castle in Lauf. This is a suburb, mm. another town of Nuremberg. And the academy in Nuremberg is, was divided into two um, sections. One was in the town, and the other one was in a small town in front of Nuremberg. And there were two classes exactly in the castle. And then he said, there I want to study. Right. And he asked the professor, and of course he said yes. And he was so happy to be in this old building, six meter walls. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> For him as a Japanese man, <laughs> where the walls are this. Right, right, right. And he, he said he really enjoyed this mm. place. Yeah. That's just lovely. So, mm. He chose this Nuremberg and this academy. So. And he met me after half a year staying in Germany. He met us, 
and we were almost four, five years. We lived together in Nuremberg, and then we went to um, Tokyo to live there. And of course, I have, I had to um, integrate myself. I had to learn Japanese language and to make all this stuff. And I started also. I, I tried once to start with him to talk in Japanese language, and he said to me, "No, when I come back home, I want to hear you talking in German, in uh, German to me, because that calms me down." Oh, how interesting! When I yeah. come back home, I want to speak in German because then I have the feeling which I had in Germany. It mm. was a calm life. Mm. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe it was partly also the the, the, the feeling that. All the culture around this, this age age old culture of Germany that that, that gave him this peace yes. and sense of yes. rootedness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And and we we only spoke in German when we did Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. So but but if you only spoke German at home, how did you learn Japanese then? Outside. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 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 but on the other side, I was, after a while, I was happy about this because um, my, my children, they raised also up with both languages. Ah, and of course. of course, to Papa, they spoke in Japanese, and to me, they spoke in German. And they heard how adults speak together in German language. Mm. So. When we came here to Germany after his death, so it was a good way I found out because from the beginning they knew, okay, German language is not only put on your shoes and brush your teeth or something, yeah, 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 yeah. but there's also how to communicate the, the adults yeah. together. So it was really a good thing. What a great gift to give, to give the children. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Um, so how, how did your children have, um, live with this art, I mean, with an artist, you know, creation of art, did they accept that as being normal in, in a normal household, or was it difficult for them to see how their father was so different from the other fathers that they knew from their friends? Yeah, I, I mean, in the summertime, in the last five summer, we went to Myoko Koken. Mm -hmm. it was, it's in Niigata, um, countryside area, very beautiful, and they enjoyed living there because mm. the Geda had a uh, had a project there, a summer mm. school, mm. and there was um, from this community they um, let us live in a big house with students and guests from the university, and also of course we as the family we was, was played an important role in this house. Of we course. had to organize yes. a lot of things, and the children enjoyed it, and the children also enjoyed. Um, being together with the students, they were the big brother and sister or something yeah, yeah. we have there, yeah. So they become the babysitters, I think. Yeah, it's a kind of, mm, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, on, on the one side, they, they knew that their power is like this, but on the other side, we had a normal life. Mm -hmm. But he was very busy, so there was not much time to spend with his children, yeah. Mm. Oh, that's, yeah. Of course, that happens with Western families too. <laughs> 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 uh, so, but uh, let's see. Uh, but if there any any questions from the audience, I mean, uh, the, mm -hmm. please. Yes, yes. Hi. Okay. Thank you very much for your insights we got here of, of your husband's work. Coming back to the technique, I would like mm -hmm. to do. Uh, so he grinded his uh, lapis lazuli stones. And then what did he add to have a paint uh, to, to work as painting? Uh, was, how was, was the mixture? Did you know about? Um, to make the lapis lazuli, the pigment, the is pigment. It's, it's a process mm -hmm. by its own. It's very yeah. difficult to do. And when he had, um, he, he always tried to have a, um, the Japanese all technique mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he he used, um, but also he painted it on on canvas, so it was um, how can I say um, 
it was prepared the canvas like an mm -hmm. old European way, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the Grundierung, we say, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And then the, I think the technique he used was the Japanese way. Mm -hmm. It was um, with egg and and wax and then on the wax then half a lime. I think I think uh, Yuya has yes, prepared a a, a a process. I think we we got it from from uh, I'm not quite sure where we got it from. It was one, was one of the publications, but it, I think there's a, there were about 15 different steps in, in the in the process. It was actually quite complicated, and of course making it into ceramics yeah. was of course another chapter in, in itself. And uh, maybe we should also speak about the ceramics. I mean the. Um, I think it's um, the last uh, team master of the Urasenke was would be talking about how you can see the universe in, in a bowl of tea, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. what I find with these objects is that you know through this lapis lazuli, uh, we see the same dust that that King Solomon or <laughs> or Marco Polo or, or or the Pharaoh of Egypt saw. So we 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 see not only the universe, we see the history, we see the culture of, of all mm -hmm. these places. In this in this tea bowl, so it is a sense of connection with with with, uh, with a whole range of, of cultural uh, events and, and uh, histories. That, so I, I think for for me this 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 blue thing is is the shimmering blue of of the, of the bowl is absolutely gorgeous, uh, but there's so much more in in, in this um, the uh, the connections of, of with lapis lazuli. Yeah. Yes, and about his technique when he started a, a painting. He he, um, he started with, with the Grundierung in white, and then he um, he used a, a, a white a color, and he make all the um, how can I say the branches of uh -huh. all, all this it is a little bit higher than the underground, right, right. yeah, and then the, all the picture were just white, yeah, and a little bit you could see. Um, very de detailed, yeah, the, 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 the not the, the yeah. trees or something, mm -hmm. and then he had this very special um, brushes, Japanese old style of brushes mm -hmm. with the, okay. they have this shape like this, and there's the hair, mm -hmm. very, very thin, very mm -hmm. very tough, uh, very um, soft, mm -hmm. yeah, the hair, and then he got two hundred times like this with oh. the color, mm -hmm. so. And it was quite amazing. That there are some pictures, two meters or something, mm -hmm. and and he went always this way. He did. Yeah, it was also for his body very. Um, mm -hmm. He took a lot of power mm -hmm. to to paint mm -hmm. with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was filling up these structures of the paint. Yes, before. and and it was he he said th there comes a point when he's doing this. Where, where he cannot control by himself. The, the color has its mm. own way. Where it stops no? and where it gets more from this blue, then there is coming something out, yeah? which he has no influence by himself. Mm. Mm. May I perhaps ask, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, in connection to that, so would he already have um, shaped up the forms of the painting in his mind, how he would like to have it when he applied this texture. Yes. So he thought about it and thought and thought and thought and then he applied it or is it something like in a trial and failure? No, no, he, um, he made photographs. He went mm. out in, in the countryside. Mm. I, I like walking mm. in the mountains or something. And then when we went together, he made some pictures. And from these pictures, he chose some special trees or something, yeah. And and some of these branches, like mm -hmm. this tree here, he he used maybe a part of this or something. Mm -hmm. And then he was thinking, okay, this part I will use. Of course, he didn't paint exactly that one. This was not, but mm -hmm. he used it as a as the basic, yeah. And then mm -hmm. he he started to to paint mm -hmm. yeah? with the white. Did he project, project the image on his canvas? No, not or exactly, but he, knew mind, he yeah. needed it as an idea or something. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yes. I and didn't realize that. I thought it was all, all imagined. But, but no, no. He, mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 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 
very, very busy. So this, this, the memory of the walks with you in, in, the, in the nature is also in, embedded into the paintings. Yes, when, when I go out of this, I, I said to Julia, uh, I, I saw these pictures here in this exhibition, and said, yes, this is the place, and this is Bivaco, uh, the lake of Biva. Mm -hmm. Here, this is the island you see, and this is an octama, this is the view oh. from the bridge down um, mm -hmm. to the uh, river. So I, I, knew, I know their places. Well, that makes it so much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. How fascinating, yeah. wow. Mm. Oh, yes, please. Can I ask about the pottery? Um, did he work with a local potter or with various potters, any potters, to develop the glazes? Um, the pottery he did with the um, sensei from the ceramic class. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, he only had once he made from 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 a, from mm -hmm. a scratch. Mm -hmm. This is his own, and this. Um, the forms are from the ceramic class mm -hmm. someone did, and right. he painted. He yes, yeah, the glaze. Yes, yeah. he made the glaze mm -hmm. on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. He de developed the glaze. I mean, the yes. Yeah. Yes. How how was that done? But did he work together with a ceramic specialist, or did he did he experiment with different methods? So, I mean. Yes. Okay. They yeah. It was experiment. a kind of experiment. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. So has has anybody done this af afterwards? Is this a, or has it, has the tradition more or less stopped? With, with I think they stopped. Uh -huh. um, because that's also an interesting story. Um, he had so much like this little pigment in uh -huh. his atelier that he was just doing something with this. And there's another, and um, he's the professor of um, restoration in Veda. They, he also worked before with Lapis Lazuli, and it, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. And this man always, in his actually like uh, getting some <laughs> assets, <laughs> because he always saw how many it costs. Yeah, cool. and, and the only she says is just doing oh, here a little bit of picturing here. Do you want this one here? This is I gave it to you or something, wow. yeah. So and the other one he he was a because how can he do this? He was really <laughs> cherished about him that he was handing so free with this pigment. Yeah. So yeah. yeah well. <laughs> I'm sure also this this dealer from Afghanistan um, um, has now lots of st st lots of stone that's um, being ready for for the next artist who maybe works with us. Mm. But um, I mean, it's a very special technique, and, and it's not, not something that everybody can do. Yes. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Has have have people actually used these in the tea ceremony? Yes. 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 All bowls are used in the tea yes. ceremony. Yes. Yeah. Also today, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this was also something he he did this not for a museum or not for only to look. He, he wanted also to create something for use. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really do get the sense for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have maybe time for two more questions. Two more questions? questions. Then we have to yes. round up a bit. <laughs> How are we to imagine the, the life working at Nanzenji, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they're going to, yeah, to okay. the island, Bivako? Mm -hmm. How was this life the, the last years the between last this mm -hmm. home and Bivako and uh, uh, Nanzenji? Mm -hmm. um. Okay, I will tell the story why he went to Nansenji. Mm -hmm. um, the, the university got the order from the uh, ten, ten, temple mm -hmm. in Nansenji. We have old Fuzuma mm -hmm. and we need, um, to, they, they have to be photographed. We have a new camera, with the new, no? we have a very good photographs we want to have from the old Fuzuma. Mm -hmm. And and they asked Gedai, do you have a photograph professor who can handle with the best camera you have? 
And there is a <laughs> there is a professor for photograph, but my husband was better than him <laughs> with the <laughs> new camera. So then they decided, okay, only she is going with the professor as a kind of assistant <laughs> and with the assistant from the professor. So they, they three went to Nanzenchi to take um, pictures by photographs from the old Fuzuma. <laughs> and they went into this hall. And then in a, in a branch, in a, in a, in a break, um, there comes the, the abt mm -hmm. from the um, Nanzenji, and they, they, he talked with my husband. So, and then my husband asked him, why are the Fuzumas here in this room are uh, white? Well, why is there no painting here in this, in this hall? Nobody painted here or something or something? And the, the, the abt says, no, but if you want. Really? Mm. <laughs> Bring me something for just Fuzumas and then we will talk about it. Really? Yes. But that's simple. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I, the Tony was told like yes, 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 yes. that yes, yes, yes. So he went. Uh, he 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 took the first four Fuzuma in his atelier in the summertime. He painted with his lapis lazuli technique on it, mm. and then this Fuzuma were brought back to um, Nanzenji. And then the last thing we heard was the abt is sitting in front of the Fuzuma and is thinking about. <laughs> Oh. And it took maybe, I don't know, three weeks or something. And then he got the right, okay, take all the um, um, 73 Fuzuma <laughs> <laughs> to paint in your technique on it. Wow. Yes. yes. It's a huge commission, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he kept it secret. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yes. He took the next one, the next eight Fuzumas, and he painted on it. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. So that, that, that must, that's a quite special <laughs> special moment. But he didn't paint at, the, at Nanzenji, he, he took them back yes. with him, of course. And, and, he, he, yeah. he took them from, from Nanzenji to Myoko Kogen. Ah, right. in, in this, um, there's some picture in the catalog, this big hall. Right. Right. It's right. a kind of. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a kind of, what can I say? This was a ryokan, a big ryokan in, in Akakuro Onsen. Mm -hmm. And they had a big hall which they used for, um, for concerts, mm -hmm. shamisen concerts, or for some culture events or something. And in the summertime, this ryokan, they gave this room for free to my husband to paint. Wow, that's yes. very impressive. Yes, because they also like his work so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this was his atelier in the summer time, mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. so a, a room like this here. Yeah, really, so big. Wow, with so tatami and so. So he had to move all his material from his Keidai atelier to yes. to. But that must yes. have been also a large mm -hmm. undertaking. Yes, yes. Wow. And it was the, the the humid in this room was just perfect. Um, for the Fuzuma. Mm -hmm. yeah? yes. in, in, the, yes. in the summertime, it's quite humid, the air, and he painted um, in Akakura Onsen, in this atelier, this Fuzuma from Nanzenji. Mm. And the paper was sometimes very old, he had to make a new paper on it and something. Mm. And then comes the winter, and he went back to Geidai Atelier, and this is a building made from concrete mm -hmm. and because of the air condition mm -hmm. in the winter the Fuzuma started to no <laughs> yes to um, what can I say separate uh, yes it yeah, crack. To scratch scratch ah, yes yeah. so and he he was in, in hurry because he had an exhibition in February and this was just around Christmas and New Year when all the Fuzuma in his atelier got some <laughs> scratches. Mm. And then he went to the restaurateur in Gedai and he asked her, please help me. <laughs> 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 the old Fuzuma, they <laughs> get wrong. And they, they did, they did it. They did it. But there was also the ex 
exhibition in Omodesando. Oh no. <laughs> and then he decided, okay, nobody knows about this Fusuma. It was a secret, but now I have to show it. <laughs> Ah. And this was the exhibition in Omo de Zando, oh, really? in the gallery, where he showed the Fusuma. To big yes. acclaim, yes, yes. Yes, and um, it was kind of, I, I was there at the, um, at, at the opening from this exhibition, and I was standing in the room, and then comes um, the, the wife from uh, Geda Sensei, came up to me, Martina, son, come on, come on. What's this Fusuma? What, what? Uh, are you building a house or something? What's going on with the Fusuma? Why is there a Fusuma here in this exhibition? I expected some paintings, not Fusuma. And I said, yes, please come here, it's written. And she read, huh? Then her face changed. <laughs> and he, she said, huh? This is from Nansenji? Huh? What is he doing? Uh, yeah, it, it was for them, it was really like a, huh? What is only she now doing here? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, at, uh, 100 or 200 years ago, it would have been normal for a painter to do this, but, mm. uh, but maybe not for contemporary. <laughs> Great story. Mm. Let's see, we have one more, one more question from the audience. One last question. Rosa? Mm. And maybe, um, Tell us uh, what would be the final idea of this Fusuma exhibition. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. That only uh, well, Hiroshi she had planned that it should be exhibited in a special way. Could you please tell? Because it's also a very specific <laughs> way of exhibiting. Okay. And um, this the hall in Nansenji in this temple is kind of I, I have only seen the photographs, but I think it's a room bigger than this room here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's a glass front to the garden of Nanzenji. And Nanzenji, um, also the temple of Nanzenji is very famous for its beautiful garden mm -hmm. outside. Japanese garden, all the trees or something. And he planned that the Fusuma he will paint for three years on it. And he will be finished in autumn with this work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he decided also, okay, when it's autumn, then the leaves are very beautiful outside, all is colorful, and the Fusuma is blue inside the room, mm. and he also planned a tea ceremony with his lapis lazuli, a big tea ceremony, mm. yes. Wow. And this will be the, um, the opening of the hall with his paintings. Yeah. Fantastic. And he already did some ideas or some s sketches how mm. it will be there. Yeah. And, yes. Fantastic. So, a uh, big un ensemble uh, that wow. was the uh, idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and when he died, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you know, but he, um, we are fishing in Bivako and the boat um, Turned over drove yeah. and he, he, the, 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 he was drunk in Bivako and I was thinking, it, it was too early somehow. Mm -hmm. It was uh, also it was just um, two weeks after Fukushima, and the, the the situation in Japan was very deep. Mm -hmm. the, the, the the feelings of the people they were so sad, they were so deep. And I was thinking, yeah, um, after three years when he finished the Fuzuma or something, then they got a new spirit in right. Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we. Even in this situation, we got something special. Right. And I was thinking like this, it was too early. Why, why oh, in this situation, now he has to go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was something which so I felt. Mm -hmm. I felt so sad, not only that he died as my husband, but also that he died in this step of his life. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it really was, was envisioned as his, his great Life work, wasn't it? I mm. mean, the three years and yes, yeah. Yes. So yeah, that is mm. really very, very tragic. Mm. So the, the 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 panels that he did finish are they now in the Nanzanji temple? Or? Yes, I have heard yeah. from Julia today. I have heard from from the uh, visitors. <laughs> 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 uh, we 
I can't say it what the situation now, but they told that uh, it's known to them. So that probably they saw it at Nantes and Key. But I can't guarantee that it's really definitely in the museum. So we have to go, we have to go and see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put the article on the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly.